So hello, my name is Sam Wosowski. I work at CERN uh, together with Ocean, who presented uh, the Icarus simulator and together with Javier. Um, the I'm going to talk about uh, some technicalities, so it's going to be mostly boring geometry and math. Uh, some of the ideas and algorithms that we developed for the interactive router that uh, we contributed to PCAT. So the outline is, first of all, a little bit of introduction to the routing algorithms, uh, then the geometry and storage model we used in, the in our router, then the core of the router, which is the push and shove and tag algorithm, some of words about the optimization strategies, and a little status on the future improvement. I apologize in advance, I'll be browsing very quickly through the slides because I have only 12 minutes to talk and the material is quite big, so I will give you handouts after the presentation. So, what is it? Maybe instead of just reading this, I will show you a little demo. So, basically, interactive routing is the capability of being able to push away colliding traces as you wrote. This takes a lot of time. You need to modify your PCB. If you need to drag some stuff, you know, here, for instance, we have a lot of traces. If you want to make space for the new one, that's it. Can you imagine moving all this stuff by hand? Yeah. Takes a lot of time. <laughs> Same with dragging objects. So basically, this is what interactive routing <coughs> is about. And it's a de facto standard in all the proprietary software from mid-range to high-end products. It's uh, so why use that? Well, the main reason is saving time. <laughs> it also <laughs> gives you It also gives you full control of, of uh, or almost uh, full control of, of your layout because in the end you decide what, what traces get pushed, uh, what traces, how, how the traces are laid. You know, in, in the auto router you don't have such a control. And even if you try an auto router, you first have to spend a lot of time configuring it and then spend a lot of time cleaning the results of the auto, of the auto routing. So, Let's get into the technical stuff. So geometry, shape based, it operates on simple geometric uh, primitives. Uh, and the three item types that the router uses are called solids, segments, and vias. So solids are fixed PCB items such as pad, keep out, er keep out areas, or the board, outli board outlines. Vias are, well, just vias. Segments are simple straight line segments of non-zero thickness that connect two points in the board space. And uh, for the push and shove algorithm, uh, we have yet another item that's a chain of segments on the same layer of the same width, ending at two different points, not forming a loop, and possibly with a via at an end, and I will call it a line. So this shape-based approach lets us uh, add new PCB graphical features just by adding new shapes. Uh, the storage model of the router. This is the, the other part uh, that is quite important for the performance and uh, just being able to route the stuff in the real time interactively. So it needs to provide extremely fast collision search. Uh, it needs to provide a fast and robust way of res resolving the connectivity between items. So for instance, uh, following which traces go from, from which point to another, how they are connected with, uh, with each other. The other uh, perks of, 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 of the storage model that we, that we developed for the PCAT router is uh, the storage is completely flat, there is no hierarchy, it just stores segments, bias, etc. and all the connectivity is resolved on the fly. Uh, there is also a lightweight copy and write uh, cloning mechanism, but uh, if you want details about it, I can, I can explain it uh, after the presentation. So just a quick note on the collision search. So we use arches for that, a separa separate rectangle tree for, for spatial indexing of the items, separate feature layer, and also a separate trees for paths to minimize the overlap. The clearance for collision search is provided by an external function object. So this way you can define any sort of complex DLC rules and kind of input them to the router without having to modify the router itself. 
I will skip this part about the con connectivity resolution and uh, stop being light and get straight to the sort and hug algorithm with our stand. So the very basic idea is uh, to define an octagonal bounding polygon around uh, all the colliding items and uh, the distance between this bounding polygon and the and the colliding items is and the colliding item is simply defined by the clearance rule then these polygonal holes are used to compute uh, the short and hack traces so the hugging and walking around algorithm works by first computing an initial line which are just two obtuse angled trace segments then computing, finding one by one the colliding items, computing the octagonal holes, and then choosing the direction where to go. It's either clockwise or counterclockwise, and the constraint is to, to either keep the same direction or to minimize the distance, etc. So the result of, uh, of the row hug and walk around algorithm is the thick red line that further on gets optimized, smooth, etc and it's also a source primitive for the shove algorithm. So, shoving. It's a recursive algori algorithm using a stack. Uh, the first step is to take the initial line drawn by the user, just two straight uh, segments, 45 degree angle, and push it on the stack. Then we take the top item from the stack, we find all the colliding lines in bias, call it as well, we sort them according to the distance from the originating colliding line and process one by one and push the results on the stack, call it recursively, so until all the lines are processed. So these octagonal holes are also used to, 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 to shove the colliding lines away. So this in it shows the idea. Here is our initial line that we want to, to push, that we want to, 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 to that, that collides with, with these two connections and we want to get them to get them away. So during iteration number one, we find a collision with this line. We build the set of octagonal holes and we simply iterate over the holes and merge them with the colliding line to obtain the first thick uh, red line. Then it gets pushed on the stack. We discover that it collides with another line and we repeat the step. So uh, after two steps, we get the two shoved uh, uh, lines that are fed later on to the optimizer to make them look smoother. What in case of a collision with a fixed object, an uh, unmovable one? So we need to decide whether to backpropagate the collision, kind of reflect it back towards the cursor, or whether to jump. There is some, some, some simple heuristics uh, that, well, a set of rules that uh, that uh, uh, does what it think it thinks is best, but without any kind of scientific ground. So, in order to have this uh, this, this backpropagation mechanism, we assign a rank for each uh, item, and the rule is that the higher rank is the slower rank item. So, here is a drawing explaining the subsequent iterations. This line. The blue one, the initial one, was 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 uh, is being dragged by the cursor. Then it shows R3, uh, line two, line two shows line three. Then it hits the solid, and the rank is the rank is modified in such a way that the collision is backpropagated. Now, what to do with the via? So, if a via is trying to push a colliding line, the Solution is simple. Just build uh, an octagonal hole around the pushing via and do the same as, as in the line to line case. When a via collides with another via, or if a line collides with a via, it's a bit more complicated. We solve it by computing a minimum resolving force, like in a simple physical simulation when you, where you have physical objects colliding. You need to, to calculate the overlap vector and simply push it away. And then we drag the traces that are connected to the via being pushed, put them on the stack, and uh, so on and so forth. Uh, the latest graph feature of this uh, show algorithm is spin. Like so as you retrieve the cursor, the traces attempt to get back to their former position. So we use a small step approach. 
uh, board state of the current iteration is just a slightly modified uh, snapshot of the board from the previous iteration. And the if state of the of the of the board, thanks to this lightweight cloning mechanism that I can descri describe after the presentation, uh, is basically a separate entry in a in a separate branch stack. Now, with every iteration of the so with with every run of the SOV algorithm, we simply check how many entries of this branch stack are not colliding with the with the current uh, cursor position. If the collision is uh, not found, we can retreat. So, how to put it all together? The user moves the cursor, we compute an initial 45 degree line, we hack the solid because we can't do anything else about them with that line, we check the springback uh, possibility and rewind the springback stack if possible, then we run the iterative search over to do the force propagation for the wires and back propagation for the solids. The last step is to, the last two steps are to run an optimizer on all the affected items and to store the results uh, on the springback stack. Now just a quick word on the optimization algorithm. So the goal is to reduce the length, to reduce the corner count, specifically to remove acute and right angled uh, corners, which first of all look ugly and secondly they can cause manufacturing issues, to tighten the routing, to align traces and wires, uh, to make a nicer line between the paths for um, path patterns like under a BGA, and to optimize the neck down of a path. So for instance, we don't have acute angle pad axis. Uh, one important remark is that uh, all of this stuff uses uh, very extensively collision checking. So a uh, good storage model with classified index needs to match here. So an example of a quite trivial but efficient optimization algorithm is uh, to merge segments. We simply take the row, very cornery initial path, the yellow one, and we iterate to all the vertex pairs, trying to connect each pair with a simple two-segment uh, connection and check if it, co if it doesn't collide. Then the cost function is basically uh, the length, number of corners, etc., etc., and some weights. So enough technici technicalities. The status. Uh, single trace interactive router is available in Kitev since September 2013. It's already used for routing pretty complex projects. Uh, we are currently working on a differential person lens matching. I can show that to you later. And uh, the release of, uh, of the diff pairs is uh, coming very soon. So a little outlook for the future. I'm sorry, I have 15 seconds left. We want to support people zones in board outline. Uh, we want to improve the optimizer, we want to change a bit the way the connectivity is resolved and we want to add auto extender track mode, just press finish and it will finish the trace in simple, in simple cases. So that's it. Thank you very much. how do we decide which direction the headline goes? I mean, by the headline, I understand the initial path for, uh, uh, for shoving. So the direction is only determined by the cursor. Is yeah. this what you meant or? Yeah, I don't know. I, I tried and it worked with shove, but not algorithm. Mm -hmm. Hug or shove? Hug. Mm -hmm. Yep, let's. Ah, well, uh, so whether to start diagonal or straight okay. is a user input. Sorry? It's a user input. Ah, okay. You can switch the posture of the track. Okay. This gives you a bit more control. Yeah. Uh, you mean 
system sort of like a Pythoning algorithm. It's a, the, the, uh, the question was if there is a possibility to uh, to pull the tracks uh, towards themselves, right? So for the moment there is no such feature, although we are working on a new optimization algorithm that uh, tightens the rhythm together. Well, in the simplest form, the pushing algorithm can be also used to bring uh, the traces uh, closer. Uh, so for instance, the traces here, these segments are not at their minimum possible clearance. So by dragging the segments at the edge, we can make them, we can place them a bit tighter. Same in uh, this case. Uh, well, the question uh, was if this tightening can be automated. For the moment, no, it's uh, an interactive thing. It requires user input, but uh, we are open to such improvements. So the question was if uh, we have any long-term plans to implement uh, component shoving. For the moment, no, it only depends on, on how well the current, uh, uh, the current uh, features uh, will go, like the differential pairs and the uh, lens max traces. So basically you're having to use a newer feature in place that you already have in place? Uh, so the question was if you if I move a component, what does the shove and hack algorithm do? For the moment, nothing. So it it's a made for routing, not for placement. Okay, I was asking about the maybe the hack part. So let's say untighten is not available, and one side is still not available. Uh, untighten is. So the question was if the if the traces are once tightened, if it's possible to untighten them without uh, untightening each trace by hand. So it depends on the optimizer effort. Uh, currently, the optimizer is kind of very greedy, so it does the untightening by itself because it tries to merge as long segments as possible. So, for instance, if I click on this and I try and I I'll drag it, it will untighten the traces, straighten them as much as possible. Thank you very much.